This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. The following is a paid program. The content is provided by the advertiser. WPSL, its staff, management, and ownership are not responsible for the content. Investment involves risk. Prior to making any investment, an investor should meet suitability requirements. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Neither the opinions expressed nor the information provided constitutes a recommendation to purchase or provide investment advice. The material presented is not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person or firm. Securities offered through Centaurus Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. And now the host of the Team Martech Hour, Joe Martech. Nail big time. 340 1590. 340 1590. This is the Team Martech Hour. We normally call it the Dan and Joe Show because Dan Warren, independent insurance agent, Joe Martech, financial advisor, are the two steady members, along with steady guest. Steady guest, retired prosecuting attorney from Wisconsin, Alan Love, who, um, is, is in desperate need for semi-intelligent people, so he hangs with us occasionally. Semi-intelligent. <laughs> I didn't want to didn't that, toot Alan. the horn too hard there, you know, Alan. Now, aren't you glad you're not in Minnesota now? I'm glad I'm not in Wisconsin now and Minnesota. Or same, either. Same, same difference. It's the same thing. Hey, same how about difference. New York, New Jersey, <laughs> Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts, another, another nor'easter. Four in a month. Which Isn't that going to make our property values go up as they escape? Well, I was listening we to... We don't need any more. I was listening to it's CNBC today, here. and they said, all the billions of dollars that are lost because of these storms, all the retailer, the restaurants, and then well, I you thought, know, I remember look growing at up, all the billions of dollars that are being made by the repair guys at Home Depot and course, Lowe's. Of course, did, did life stop, though, Joe, when you were a kid and it snowed? You might get a snow day. It would but Dad have, because I lived in West Palm, so it okay. would have definitely <laughs> stopped. <laughs> hey, when no, I lived us, up it, north, we loved, we loved snow. School but would that's close. that's a kid. We loved hurricanes. Yeah. We prayed for yeah. hurricanes for no school. And when we were surfing. In, and then surfing, and then we get together mm-hmm. for parties and stuff. But we never had great fears of hurricanes. Right. After Andrew, the, you know, they started watching that storm when it came off Africa now. It gives you a 10-minute update that it might be getting a little bit better, mm-hmm, and it mm-hmm. creates fear in, in people. Well, yeah. Andrew created a mess, too, but that was, I think, because they they were lax with the codes. They were. They were. Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff that was built in Florida that either had no code mm-hmm. or very little. Mm-hmm. I mean, they used to spray foundations on the ground with concrete, and there was no footers. I mean, it was no. interesting stuff. Well, and I've seen... Had- some older homes that are built here locally in Port St. Lucie, they're built like banks. Yeah. yeah. So some of those contractors built solid, you know, poor tie I beams. They d- did a magnificent mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of the guys way, way back, I'm talking in the 50s, people that built houses, sometimes they were there building it with, oh, along yes. with the contractors. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I know when I had the house up on Indian River Drive built up on Tick Ridge, and that's, you know, that's all sugar sand up there, and foundations were tough, and that thing was solid as a rock. That was so some of those old houses, especially some of those old wooden frame cracker yeah. houses, yeah. I mean, that's they'll be the, here after you and I are long gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 340-1590, 340-1590. Did I ever tell you the story about my brother saving my life when I was a kid? Yes, I think so. What would you do? Did I ever tell you the story, <laughs> Alan, about... <laughs> <just> somebody else. <laughs> uh, let me ask somebody else about my brother saving my life when I was a w- kid. Would you like a no answer? I'll be happy to give you one. <laughs> I think he's But is it too. the truth? <laughs> it is the truth. I feel okay. better because, you know... So I got thinking about this the other day. I was talking to a couple of clients of mine recently about parenting. And one, in, two in particular are, are uh, ministers, uh, pastors of local churches, and the, the word parenting came up big. And I said, you know, when we were kids, we had fear. We didn't have respect. We had fear. You don't do anything wrong because the old man will kill you. Little minor thing, you know. It was good. and I think it was perfectly legal to kill kids back then. You know? I don't think they actually killed kids, but they did make that threat. They did make that threat. Yeah, but I, you I, made I, it, didn't I you? I remember some kids coming to school, <laughs> and they were, had some bruises on them that the old man he he really straightened the kid right out. And I don't think that kid ever did yeah. again. Well, I we, say straighten them out, but don't leave marks. Well, you always hit them in the back of the head where they can't see it. Yeah, you know, wooden spoon, <laughs> wooden spoon, you know, a little smack with a wooden spoon. Well, when I was 12 years old, I got caught smoking. 
Now, you might remember back in those days, everybody smoked. I mean, the parents all, I mean, smoking was... Twelve-year-olds? Yeah, we smoked. Well, well, well I started smoking. We smoke. the cigarette machines. Not in my house. Put our chains in Not the in the house. Not, no, not no, anywhere no. near the house. No, we, li- we lived in, I call it GI housing. These are houses that were built after the Second World War, and every house on the block was exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, there's 100 houses in a row. Right. And they didn't have any winding streets back then. No, they had square straight. streets. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we had three bedrooms, one bath upstairs, and a basement. This is up north in mm-hmm. Detroit. And invariably, the the father would fix up the basement. You remember putting those little square tiles down with heat? You remember those? We didn't have a basement. See, we had you. You would we, take, grew up you in the would take these square tiles, you know, like foot like square, linoleum type like stuff. Linoleum, okay. And then you'd heat them with a blowtorch so, so that they fit. To the concrete. They'd yeah. hit fit so right. nice and level. Yeah. I mean, this was not like rolling stuff. Out. Had, they were sort of like tarry. We had terrazzo floors. Okay. Yeah, I have terrazzo Florida now boy. in the house. I mean, I love terrazzo. Anyway, and the old man finished it off, and he put a bathroom in. And he did put you call a, it a rec room? No, it'd be called the only place we were allowed. <laughs> <laughs> now we had a we had a bomb shelter that was close to a basement. There you go. There you the go. Wow. Yeah, close. So we had he built in a bar. And he caught me smoking, and he's standing behind the bar. And my brother, who was seven, five years younger than me, was standing next to me. And my old man ran a military house, very similar to yours, Dan. Yeah. And, I mean, it was yes, sir, no, sir, no, forget dad and father. That, that was out of the question. And you never looked him in the eye unless he told you to. You always looked mm-hmm. down and were mm-hmm. humble. You, mm-hmm. you had to know your place. So I'm standing the other side of the bar, and my dad is describing how I'm going to die. He's going to dismember me, mm-hmm. and I'm going to die slowly because Drawn and quartered. worse than a mortal sin and going straight to hell was smoking against the old man's rules. Now, you might remember this, Alan, because you're from up north, too, that, in fact, it makes no difference where you're from. Back then, these were the rules. There was the right way, the wrong way, and his way. Mm-hmm. We can forget that right. was the right way. Well, that was, that was but the, it was his house. That was a. That was the only way things were done. <laughs> yep. So he's going through this tirade, and my brother's afraid to move for fear he'll get killed by osmosis. Mm-hmm. So he's standing right next to me. Now my brother's name is Eric, but his nickname was Sass. I can Sassy because mm-hmm. he had that look, and he could get away with murder. Do you have a younger? Like I have a younger sister. She got away with murder. Yes, she did. <laughs> anyway, the oldest one always gets the, the rod. I'm telling mm-hmm. you, the younger one seems to get away. Did you have that in your house, Alan? I was an only child, so yeah. I had all the you, benefits you got all, and all, all, the, all the weapons. <laughs> <laughs> so he looks at my brother and says, Sass, are you smoking too? My brother looks at my dad and says, no, dad, I quit last year, honest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really hard to kill a kid when you're laughing. So the old man, he just told us to leave immediately. And for this day, to this day, I owe my brother my life. That's right. he, now, he, Joe, what type of cigarette was it? Ah, Lucky Strikes. Oh, there you gosh. go. Lucky Strikes. Well, and you know what? Here, your brother broke the mood is what he did. Uh, yeah, listen. He put it all into was, perspective. I was 10 years old. I probably weighed 50 pounds. Who knows? But I'd have them rolled up on my shoulder in the T-shirt. Remember that? Yes, the white T-shirt. And that Lucky strike pack was wider than me <laughs> that was the rule we didn't smoke luckies we smoked cools really we smoked cools. Well, that's because you were from the wrong side of the tracks absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> now we had luckies were number had li- one they were, didn't even have filters well, no. no filters they some were of, of, some of my boys smoke marlboros but most of us smoke cools and then we tried dipping and snuff oh, boy. that didn't work we didn't like that well, that was another time my old man was mad at me, and uh, he had me dip some snuff and swallow it. That's nasty. And I, that was the end of my career. Yeah, with that. I was thinking, you know, you get caught smoking. Okay, here's a pack. Get busy. You, you'll uh, you'll turn green and never smoke again. Let me just tell you what. It didn't <laughs> slow me down a bit. No. I, but I will tell you this. Um, I was sneakier. I, yeah. s- I happily smoked till I was 23. And then when they got like 50 cents a pack, I said, I'm not spending 50 cents on cigarettes. I'm done. And I just quit. I started at 10, quit when I was 30. Well, you had a lot of money invested. I had a lot of money I invested. did see, remember I was just talking about the cigarette machines? Yeah, yeah. I saw one at a bar yesterday. 10 bucks? Eight, 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 e
it's a great topic for a transition into health care. And into Dan, health I got a question <laughs> for you. Okay. Here come. Dan, let's say a health insurance company. Is this a company, segue? It's a, it's a segue. Yeah. <laughs> He's changing the subject. <laughs> 3401590 by the way. Dan, uh, let's say a health insurance company denies coverage saying it's uh, experimental or whatever reason it is. What are the appeal processes that you might have with the insurance company? Well, you're going to have to notify them in writing, and you're probably going to have to get your doctor to help intervene. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because in many cases, it's going to take the doctor's mm -hmm. expertise to get them to come off the dime and, and agree to that. But in some cases, they won't. Yeah, I get those them. letters. I get, you know, we go to the doctor, prescription gets written, I take it to the pharmacy, and they go, well, it's being held up by the insurance company. And then I'll get a letter in the mail from the insurance company that says, not medically necessary. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, let me give, <laughs> give you like a personal example. Like when, when my youngest daughter, Megan, which, by the way, today is her birthday, so happy birthday, baby. When she had her twins, she called one day and she goes, Dad, can, can you explode from having children? And I said, well, baby, people have been having You should have twins. said that's a better question for your mother. <laughs> yeah. I said, they've been, having, they've been having twins for centuries. I don't know if anyone's exploded. She goes, I just feel like I'm going to explode. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, here's what happens. While she is so pregnant, the muscles in her stomach start to rip. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, they, and so she has this big area on her stomach. The doctor said, hey, when you uh, decide not to have any more children, you need to get that fixed. So since then, her and her husband have changed insurance companies. Is it going to be an issue? Is it a pre-existing condition now? Well, I don't know, but it is not cosmetic surgery. Right. Because it has to be done. So mm -hmm. I'm anticipating... A contest. As, you, as yeah. you ask, I'm anticipating some interaction with their legal department, but I believe we will win. Let me ask you this, Dan. Under Obamacare, there's not supposed to be any more pre-existing conditions. Well, then the difference for Megan is, is it cosmetic or ah, is it medically cosmetic. necessary? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, lies. and then her premium. I mean, it, you, you may have pre-existing conditions. They may not deny you a policy, but can you pay for it? Well, which, which talks about, you know, Nancy and I pay over thirty grand a year for our health care. That's unbelievable. Well, what happens is he's old. That's right. No, yeah. he's paying for somebody else. Well, that too. I'm subsidizing <laughs> several somebody That's else. That's right. Several. You know, hey, listen. Luther. Because they have coverage, but they don't have care. No. Three, four. They have a big deductible that they can't afford to meet, so they don't go. Right. But I guess that where we didn't go... Um, arbitration, mediation, or real lawsuit? Now, those are all steps that you can utilize in trying to get a claim to go to your satisfaction. But there are going to be times when regardless of what you emotionally feel is right, is not legally right, is not contractually right, and you may not get what you want. Oh, you know so, that, yeah. But so, the problem is your doctor thought this was right for you and you can't get it. Well, then that's up. That's going to be between your doctor, mm -hmm. your insurance company, right. The state, possibly. And then you have to go back to the doctor. Is the doctor working for you or the insurance company? That is correct. Dan, let's, so, say, let's say I have an issue that requires mediation. Okay. Uh, would you, as my agent, go with me and help me to present the case, or would it be wise for me to hire an attorney? It would be wise for you to hire the attorney. Would you also go, or isn't, I, I, isn't it? It's going to be a conflict of interest for me to go. I've got a fiduciary relationship to my carrier, I see. and I have a, a, a relationship to my client. So what we normally say is go to the mediation hearing. They don't usually come with a lawyer. It's a discussion between you, the company rep, and an independent arbitrator, a judge, mediation judge. And, and I will tell you in many cases they are – uh, in my opinion, pro-consumer. If there's a way they can make it so for you, they will try to do that. But if what you're asking for is, is so outrageous that it's never going to happen, then you're probably going to lose. You know, in many times I've seen insurance companies say, listen, can we settle for this and you sign a total release from us and we can, we can move on? I have two of those going on right now where we have uh, clients who uh, can't really prove their position but feel they're justified and the carrier has said listen you know we'll settle for you know uh, another 10 grand but we're done 
in 30 days you got to be gone 60 days you got to be gone um so those things do happen i mean it's no different than if i sued you in, in civil court and on the way to the actual hearing we settle on the courthouse steps i've seen that happen but Often. we don't but we don't settle till we get to that point because many times the carriers need to know that you're serious I've seen a lot of settlements where when the plaintiff's case is over, the defense or, or the, uh, the other side will settle immediately yes. sure. because they realize if they wait for the judge to make the ruling or the arbitrator, they're going to have a tougher you, time. You have put your checkbook in the hands of the jury or the judge. Right. So you're right. So, but you have to have the, the tenacity to get to that point, Alan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uh, attorney with my $30,000 dog <laughs> said, uh, besides the fact he told me I was stupid, he said that uh, even if we are 100% right, it might cost you fifty grand to win. Absolutely. Because expert witnesses you'd have to bring in mm-hmm. and you got to pay them. And all I'm doing is defending my position. That doesn't I, feel like justice, though, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, mm-hmm. it, there, that's why he said, you know, hey, look at. But sometimes, believe it or not, the American people are not stupid. They don't always have to have a lawyer to get things done. And I can give you a great example. I, I know a lady who went in for some surgery, and she wasn't feeling well after the surgery, and she wasn't feeling well, and the doctor kept telling her that she was going to, and she went in and get, got another MRI, and they had left some sponges and stuff in her. Mm. Definitely some liability here, right? Sure. All right, so uh, she gets a very well-known attorney, who sends in the investigators and they come back and say, we think you got a good case, but it's not gonna produce enough money for us to hire all the people we gotta hire to hammer them. So you're on your own, baby. Wow. And um, I sat down with her and I said, you know what, you're a smart woman. You know what to do. Go talk to that hospital administrator and see if you can make a deal. And and she did and they paid. Sure, sure. So, So, you know, sometimes don't count yourself out. Yes, you might need a little instructions, but you know what? We have a wonderful internet system. You can go in, you can look at stuff, you can help educate yourself. So before you go in, you know what you might want to ask for. You know, don't ask for the moon because mm-hmm. that's not going to happen. Well, I would be asking to get them sponges out. Well, that happened. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. happened. You know, there's, yeah. all, there's, there's all kinds of reasons, too. Well, it, we do this all the time. I, I have a young man that he's in trouble with the, with the IRS, and I said, mm-hmm. look at before you start hiring somebody go down and talk to them you know find out because there's offers is there a voice of reason at the irs many times man big big time you can't believe how good they are i mean what what strikes fear in the heart of mankind today just the irs yeah but you'd be (laughs) not much else you'd, you'd be surprised and i don't know what happened but in the last few years the irs has become extremely user friendly now, maybe it's because of abuses in the past, but they work with people like crazy now to help them through. And oftentimes, uh, you, you, there's certain words that you'll hear on the tube about offer and settlement or some kind of program the IRS has, and they are. They have programs to and help people. you don't people. necessarily need a lawyer. No. Let me give you a great example, all right? Many years ago, my uh, mother-in-law, who and I dearly loved her, but she passed away of lung cancer, all right? So you fast forward about 15, 20 years later, and I see there's like the, this big lawsuit they're going to settle. And if you know or had any loved ones who died from this, let you know you could be part of this suit. Sure. So I looked at Nancy and I go, "You want to look into this, baby?" She goes, "Well, okay." So we, we got online, and the first thing is 20 lawyer ads pop up. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So I said, "Well, bypass them. Let's see what they want." Well, everything that they want, and if you would have hired the lawyer, you would have had to provide to the lawyer, Mm -hmm. like proof of how they died, Mm -hmm. photographs Mm -hmm. of them smoking. So we would have had to done all this work anyway. We submitted it, and and, and we got paid, and we split it with with her uh, her brother and her sister. There you go. All right, so sometimes people doubt their own abilities yep, yep. and i'm here to tell you that people can do a lot of this stuff yep 340 1590 340 do we actually well, we have a headphone shortage we have a headphone That's shortage well we're going to find a headphone not, but we got tony on the line we got tony on the line in the meantime tony it's joe martek you're on the radio <laughs> i don't have tony no he's because see there you go i now have tony yes Tony, did you hear that you're on the radio now, that this is Joe Martek? <laughs> well, I just 
Our tech, this is Tony. <laughs> hey, hey, guy, man. how you doing, my man? I'm doing great today. The sun's shining, and I'm above the ground. Amen. Amen. Listen, we like that, both concepts. Yes, sir. And, and I, I listen to a lot of your uh, prior shows through YouTube and other sources, and I, I'm fortunate to hear you today. Uh, I have a question. You know, I... Uh, I'm semi-retired, but I want to get back into it. I don't know. I listen to you because you're so interesting. How how did you get started? How would I get started? Doing 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 what, what do you want? Do you want uh, to do you do you want to you want to sell car insurance or, or do, do you, radio show? Do you want to do a radio <laughs> show? What do you want oh, to do, Tony? I, I I listen to the advice you give people, and it's just outstanding, and the way you talk about uh, the right way to handle money, and I I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. I was wondering how you got started. What do you what did, what did you do for a living before you retired? I I worked for uh, Ford. And you? Uh, yeah, I, I worked I worked my way up as a manager in the um, in the plant, and then I started doing a little bit of uh, paperwork and accounting for them, and then I I retired and said I want to get back, and uh, the dollars interest me. Well, you know, there, it, it, it's it's no easy answer. Like like Dan is always looking for people but they have to get an insurance license and the same thing for you joe to, to do what you do you need a series six or a series seven license right. depending on the products that you want to sell tony you know you might want to find out uh how to go about obtaining that license here comes the magic questions is when you say you want to start doing something um dan and i listen there's nothing wrong with doing this well i don't care what your age is but you if you wanted to get involved in and handling money and being and doing investments and stuff, I'd be thrilled to talk to you and show you, and I can help you along. If you say, "Hey, I'd rather be in the car insurance or or, or homeowners insurance or that kind of thing," Dan would be glad to show you what you have to do as far as testing and courses and stuff. Um, it, it really depends on you. And here's something else to keep in mind, Tony. I mean, when when we look to hire people. Um, you know, we look for a licensed people and then we look for experience. You know, we, we would prefer to at my office to hire someone that has good experience and has some, a good track record. And many stock brokerage firms look at that also. But I can tell you this, that many major insurance companies and stock brokerage companies have training programs sure where they bring people in who don't have this training but who have the license because the license is the ticket in the door without that you really can't you really can't do what they want you to do see here there's there's like lots of things let's just say you said okay joe i want to become a financial advisor and i'm going to point you step by step and then how would we start off well you have to be sponsored by somebody like me normally you can't just go ahead and get that without a sponsor then you pass the exams, and that doesn't teach you anything except how to pass an exam. And they're not; these exams are not designed to help you pass. No. So then, then you say, okay, fine. Now I want to start doing something. Well, you can't. I, I'm 25, 30 years, and you know when you first get something, I don't care what the first job is. I don't care what your education is. I remember back my father-in-law; he was an uneducated engineer working for Ford back when they had Ford Trade School, and he used to have to train the graduate engineers in the job, um, and they got paid more money than he was, mm -hmm. but he they didn't know the job. Yeah, he's he, the guy who knew how to do right. it. Yeah. yeah, but they could seal it. Yeah. So I guess, Tony, where I'm going is probably the best thing for us to do is to meet off air. Let me give you my cell phone number. You can call me, and we can get together and, uh, and maybe have a cup of coffee and, and, and beat it up a little bit and see if we can, we can put a plan together. You ready? I, I am. Go ahead, Joe. Two eight five three zero eight three. Okay. Just give me a call, yeah, and we'll set up a time. We'll meet for a, a hamburger or a beer or something. Give us that number again, Joe. Two eight five three zero eight three. All right, Tony. And we've got Bulldog on the line. Okay, Tony. We're letting you go, or we did let you go, I guess. But now we got Bulldog, right? Is this true? Uh-huh. We have Bulldog on I the radio? I think so. Are you Does there, Bulldog? Does Bulldog know that he's on the radio? I don't think so. Bulldog, do you know you're here? I know he's somewhere. I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, at least let me touch myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still here, it's still there. <laughs> Make sure it hurts, otherwise you can't tell. <laughs> hey, I got a question for Dan Dan, my insurance man. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, Dan Warren, sir. Uh... Wait a minute. When he starts Dan Warren, sir, sir you know I'm this is trouble. not good. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 
I got a question how this works. Because everybody says that they, you know, can insure in certain areas. You know, like the state of Florida or, you know, other licenses in other states and everything. But, I, you know, I know where you're located. And let's say I get in an accident, you're not going to jet up here. Well, for me, you probably, well, wouldn't anyway. (laughs) (laughs) What's your name again? (laughs) Who are you? He doesn't love me that much. Anyway, so, you know, how does that work, you know, with your uh, out-of-area, you know, people that you can insure uh, I'm just wondering about well, that process. Well, here's Dan. what we usually do, just so you'll know. So you get in this car wreck. You're going to call the office and say, I got in a wreck. What should I do? So right. the first thing I'm going to tell you is, did you get uh, like a report at the scene? Because they usually give you a report at the scene as to who you got in a wreck with. Do you have uh, any documentation as to who's at fault maybe? Did you get a ticket? Uh, did you get a ticket? Did <laughs> that would be a, a good indication That's whose a, fault it was. And, and then here's the part that I I use for my practice. I'm going to say, Bulldog, here is your policy number in case you don't have it. Here's their 800 number that you probably don't have. And I want you to call them and report the claim. And here's the reason why. They're going to always take a statement from you. Always. So by having you call them or initially... That gets taken care of. And then I tell you, when you, after you're through talking to them, call me and give me that claim number. So if you have any questions, any problems, it's not moving fast enough to suit you, you can call me and I can be of assistance to you. But if everything is going smoothly, then you don't need my intervention. But if you do, then I am your advocate. I'm the one that's going to know who the manager is. I'm, the, I, I'm going to avoid you having to be on hold for two hours trying to find out what's going on. So yeah. you don't need to be in my town for me to do that. Just don't go to New York or New Jersey today. Now, here's where, <laughs> here's where having a local agent can be helpful. I know most all the body shops, and I know most of the managers within, say, you know, two or three counties. If there's a problem, I can go there, have lunch with them, uh, schmooze them into getting you going. But if your car's up in New York or New Jersey, like Joe said, I can't do that. I don't know those people, all right? But I will tell you this. Most of the major companies that we deal with, and, and quite frankly, we only deal with major companies, they all have approved shops. Now, those approved shops we know give us a better price because we send them millions of dollars worth of work. But we also know this, that they have to guarantee and warranty that workmanship as long as you own that car. Okay, well that begs another question then, Dan, is that uh, do you know approved shops where I live? Bulldog, did you wreck your car? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. Are you I'm planning just, on I'm wrecking the car? <laughs> uh, no, I'm just asking if some... No, but here, off the, top of my, the off the top of my head, I don't. But what I would do is I would call the carrier that we have you with and say, hey, I've got a client up in this county. Who are your approved shops? And then you can get together with them. Now, understand that an approved shop does not mean you have to go there. You can say, yeah, my cousin Benny has a great shop. And you can go no, see. No, no, not my Magnum. <laughs> I'm just saying you don't have to go to their shops. But if you go to a non-approved shop, they're not going to be able to apply any pressure to that body shop if that work doesn't come out to your satisfaction a year later. If that paint has some porosity or it's starting to bubble up, you're on your own because that's the shop you chose. All right. And, and Dan, the other thing is, too, is that, you know, I... I you know, and, and I have not been in any accidents, I don't, and I own a classic, so, you know, I, I'm just somebody, drunk guy, you know, comes and T-bones me. I know I'm going to call you first, you know, and that's going to be it, and I'm going to say, we got a problem, Dan. Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure you're okay. 
So, you know, if you have bulldogs, Bulldogs never been okay. Well, we want to make sure you're as okay as you can be. All Shut right. up, Joe. <laughs> anyway. And if they T-boned you or hit you, okay, I, I have a claim like, like sort of like that going on right now. Got yeah. a good customer, had him for years. Somebody hits his car. All right. So he calls me up and he says, hey, somebody hit my car and I see that it's going through my insurance. And I go, well, did you call in? Like we told you, and why did you put the claim in for your cop in collision? Because you have a deductible. He goes, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. I go, okay, so let's see out. Let's see who the other company's insurance is. So we call them up, and the first response we get is, uh, we don't think we can help you because you're not the agent for the other person. I go, yeah, but I represent my client who's trying to put a claim in. So they call me two days later and say, yeah, but the problem is the driver that you say is the owner isn't the owner of this policy. Now, that's the driver at the scene of the accident who said that. Oh, great. So chances are what I'm going to probably do in this case is I'm going to tell my customer, look, I hate to tell you this, but I, if it was me, I'd pay the $500 deductible. I'd have my car fixed or totaled, depending on what happens, and let your insurance company subrogate against them and chase them. Oh, man, I tell you, Dan, that is bad. That is bad. Insurance companies have gone out of control, you know, because the thing about it is, is that, you know, somebody hits me and whatever, I don't even know if they have insurance. And if they do, then we get in this big, stupid fight, and that's wrong. Well, you don't, you don't always the insurance company of the person that hit you, should man up and take care of that. One of the problems that we see many times, and, and I'm, I'm sort of reading into some of the things you had said earlier, is if you've got your, you know, your old car that you love, and you've, you know, you, they're they're under no obligation to replace it, and many times they're just going to total it out. So what you'd probably be better off doing is having what's called a stated value policy where you say, my old, you know, Chevelle is worth, you know, $25,000, and if it gets totaled, that's what I want. But that's through your insurance, not the other parties. That's a stated value on your part. But if it was their fault, then my insurance is going to go after them to be reimbursed. You bet. Okay. You bet. And that's and that's why in some cases I tell a client, listen, I know you, you feel sort of insulted because I'm telling you to put it through your insurance, but I see – months and months of aggravation in your future and i'm advising you to get it done and let your insurance company choke the other now what if it's the other guy's fault definitely the other guy's fault and they give you their insurance information and you're dealing with their insurance should you deal with their insurance or should you go to your company first you know you're asking big variables because (laughs) i I mean i have another case like this going on right now got a client good client went out and bought a nice little bmw it's worth a lot of money. Yeah. The guy that smashed into him only has ten thousand dollars worth of property damage. Okay. It won't even touch this car. All right. So I've I've given him that same advice. Look, he only has ten thousand dollars worth of coverage. Mm-hmm. It's going to cost almost triple that to fix your car. Let's put it through your company. Let your company chase him and his insurance company because that's what they're going to do. They're going to put a lien against him and sue mm-hmm. him personally. Mm-hmm. Most cu- clients don't want to go through all that aggravation. Sure. Yeah, because he's going to go bankrupt let, and he's going to quit his job company. and work under the table That's and right. never earn any money because the rest the, of his life. Because <laughs> the insurance company will probably sell that note to some debt collector. Yeah, right. for sure. Mm-hmm. For, you know, 10 cents on the dollar. Bulldog, the best thing to do is to have a low deductible. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> no. What, what, he's saying, what he's saying is correct, but... Your insurance bills are going to go up whether or not you were at fault in that collision or not. If it's your first claim, in many cases, it will not. No, Um, yeah, I know. Well, you mean, it, you've got it, bad luck like Joe. You know. Well, if you got bad luck <laughs> like Joe, now, then... Joe, it always goes up. That's, but, but, they don't like they my... They see you coming and it goes up, That's right? It. They see me. Yeah. They see that red Mustang and it goes up. That's it, right away. Hey, uh, Dan, I would want to talk to you if uh, you have any of those selective insurances for uh, any kind of uh, vehicles that are... You know what you would. Uh, you got a classic car, right? Well, two, 
What's it worth? 2006 Magnum SRT. Yeah. Ooh. So what you want to do is, you know, obvi- Dan, what do they do that you give a stated value? Do they? Well, do they- in many cases, you got to get some sort of an appraisal made for it. Yeah, because yeah. oh, they're I just going to Kelly Blue Book that. that. So sure. once you get an appraisal made for it, d- then get that to me, and I can see if we can get you a stated value policy based on the rare collectability of that particular model. Because, you know, you can buy a new car, and it'd be a, a collectible car from day one because it's a limited edition. Yeah, right, right. I am getting too old to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, getting I what, what? The funds, It's the funds that I was just going to say. Them. You you've been too old always, but you know the, the money is the big problem. Yeah, the money is the big problem. <laughs> yeah, I, you know at least I don't have a boat that I can just throw money at. But well, he can sit in the boat and pretend he's going somewhere. That's it. I hey, listen, <laughs> I sit on a boat and it doesn't cost nearly as much as if I move it. That's right. Yeah, just throw hundred <laughs> bucks at the hole and that's it. You know, that's it. Plug a hole. All right, my man. Every, right. Everything else is good? Yeah, yeah, we're all cool, Joe. Thank you, man. All right, all take right. care. All good, is well. Good talk to you, Bulldog. 340 three, four, zero, 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 You know, my grandkids used to love to get on the boat that's moored up yeah. and play pirate and yeah, stuff. You pretend should do like that, you, Joe. You I should, do that. You should get like a pirate, patch and stuff. Pet. I'm not even going to tell a, you that pirate and, joke. And, <laughs> and a bottle of rum. Uh, the rum, yeah. Then... Uh, Let's carry this on a little bit. Let's say you get T-boned or hit, and it's in the boondocks. You're near a small town. Uh, there are no car dealerships. There's maybe a, well, somebody a, drags a, it into a, a, mo- a motel six if you're lucky. Okay. If uh, if uh, that situation, is there a way of picking up ancillary expenses? In other words, uh, your hotel or motel stays, your meals, your getting to a car dealership to rent a car? or Many policies, if you have the towing and labor endorsement, mm-hmm. have that built into the towing and labor endorsement. In many cases, you have to be over 100 miles from your residence, or there's, there's, there's little... Um, windows that have to open for it to activate. That makes sense? Yes. In other words, just because you live in the boonies doesn't mean that if there's nobody there that you get to stay at the local Motel 6. You got to stay. Your, your accident must be at least 100 miles from your house or depending on what the company says. Or would they just tow the car to they back might. home? And motorcycles have that same and thing And you many ride times. in the cab. Your the motorcycle <laughs> breaks down. Well, if it breaks down in town... Uh, they're not going to put you up in the hotel. They'll still yeah. tow your, your, your vehicle. Mm-hmm. But if you're over a certain distance away, then they're going to put you up for a day. Mm-hmm. 340-1590. That makes sense. 340-1590. Yes. Well, that, that, was, that was a good call. Bulldog. Well, you know, each policy is a little different. You know, so when we have customers who come in, we go into the in-depth reasons as to why they should have this endorsement sure, or why sure. they shouldn't. And that's why when I see on TV, they go, oh, and, you know, in three minutes we can uh, we can get you going here and you'll have a great policy. Well, that's just not really true in my opinion. Yep. They might have t- got your name and your address and your phone number, uh, but they won't know all the ins and outs of what you need. It's impossible. It's an interesting time, interesting time politically. Would you say that? Well, you know, um, the Don has stirred the pot a little. I think he's stirring the pot pretty well right now. You know, one of the things that I like, Joe, is, you know, most people who are professional politicians, as I call them, they feel that that is a job forever. Uh-huh. And when you have a man who comes in who's used to a um, results-driven organization yeah. who says, <laughs> uh, there's been really no results for a while. Uh, while I like you and I respect you, you're fired. <laughs> right, <laughs> and people go. I can't believe he did that. How could he do that? Yeah. Well, that's because he wants results quickly. Okay, the man's making things happen. Well, he knows he only has you know another seven or seven years left to go. So there's a lot of things he has to get done in that short period of time. Yep. Because yep. that's quick seven years. Three, four, zero, fifty. Yeah, we're we're on we're on the same page. We, uh, we we need your buddy Larry here now. We need a liberal here to He's help us He's up there out. freezing. You know. Well, well Larry, Larry is back in Wisconsin, but uh, maybe we can get Greg Fasule in. I happened to see Greg uh, the other day. We were talking a few minutes, and uh, uh, actually, believe it or not, there are things that Greg is pretty happy with, one of them being the uh, – 
tax reform package. <laughs> well, they tell you what. Well, wonders never cease. <laughs> when, when, it, when it hits you personally, yeah, guess it, what happens? Oh, all of a sudden you go, ooh. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, some parts are not all bad. Right? Shh, don't tell anyone, though. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> but I see, saw Victoria, so I mean, we're, I've, you know, we all see different yeah, members yeah. of. It's you know, a small yeah. town. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the group, that's how we started way back. It was Greg Fasula, attorney, and Dan Warren, independent insurance agent, Joe Martek, financial advisor, back in aught four. And we said, hey, let's start doing radio shows so we can answer questions for people that we don't know the answers to. But in my not too humble opinion, if you're a credible professional, you align yourself with other credible professionals in order to help your clients. Because the last thing we want to do is refer somebody to somebody else that does a bad job for them. So, and you know, Joe, many times I will call, let's say I refer somebody to one of our members. Right. I'll call that person and say, hey, how'd that go? Did it work out right. well for right. you? I, right. I need to know. Yep. I have, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing, but probably on a, every other week or so, Greg's name comes up. People need a will or a trust or, or something else that might be a legal question. I was meeting with a, a, a member of the clergy today um, and was talking about a, a, a long-term lease on a piece of the church-owned property. And I said, well, you sure need an attorney for that. Yes, you do. Um, that's it. And he said, well, what about your guy, Greg? And I said, to call Greg. I said, I always call Greg first. If he doesn't have that in his ballywick, he will refer you to somebody who is an expert at that. That's, that's my whole first thing. That I know Greg is going to tell the truth and, and steer people in the right direction no matter what. Well, Greg, well, if, if Greg doesn't do it, he'll probably send him over to Walter Woods because they're both Alabama boys. There you go. And, yep, yep, uh, yep. and Walter does all that real estate stuff for, you know, for Martin County and stuff, so he's really good at that. Yep. It was uh, just an interesting thing that obviously is not, not my strength whatsoever. So then we added Ms. Victoria Lloyd, REMAX of Stewart, some years later, um, especially when the real estate bubble burst and the uh, recession hit, and all of a sudden that became a monster subject, which led us into Mike Paulus, mortgage broker, because the words were there was no mortgage money available, and that was never true. What happened is the rules changed went back to the old system was that you had to prove that you could make the payment what a, what a concept what a concept Joe. and it was just that was a rule that was in place forever and ever but during the just before the recession they had um, a bit of a scam that occurred that um, allowed people to qualify for mortgages i call it predatory lending yeah well but and, you know you shouldn't have to prove that you don't need a loan to get a loan yeah i know yeah you know i, I had a buddy of mine out in okeechobee and and he was a wealthy man and, and he ended up starting a bank out there and he said the reason he started that bank was because in his opinion the the banks that were locally there then at that time had a very low acceptance rate for loans for business loans he said they're not taking a chance on the people he goes, we need to have a bank. Now, how many years ago was that? Uh, probably 15 years ago. Because, you know, today with Dodd-Frank, I mean, all those rules are gone, but they're trying to repeal that thing right now. I know. And let it, let it go back to being a people-oriented rather than a number-oriented thing. So, it should be a relationship. Yeah, it should yeah. be, yes, you got to have a performer to show me how you're going to pay. Of course. But at the same time, like I said, you shouldn't have to prove you don't need it yeah. to get yeah. it. No. You should be able to prove you can pay it back. That's the key. Can you prove that you can pay it back? And then the fact is, if, if every single time was a business loan that you could prove you could pay it back, you'd never have new businesses starting. That's right. I mean, it just wouldn't occur. So because most businesses are based on assumptions. Based I'm on, going to do this, and, yeah. I, and, and if I do this, I should make this much mm -hmm. money on this Their much business work. plan. Their business, business plan. plan. Yeah. And it has to make sense. 340-1590, mm -hmm. 340 So the name of the game was we're going to help people save money or we're going to help people make money. Speaking of making, making money. money um, How are you going to help me today, Joe? Well, you know, I, I've got two major subjects that I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of become two-dimensional lately. What's happened is we watched the market do extremely well for a good long period of time. Right now it's in a bit of a flux that has nothing to do with the economy, which is very interesting. But the market has been pretty flat since the first of the year. And the economy keeps humming along. And in fact, unemployment's gotten down to 4.1%, which is a very, very, very low number. Wages are going. Everything in the world is moving positively except some parts of the market. And why? Well perceptions, politics, um, lawsuits, 
international crises, crises that may not occur, crises that might occur. Might, yeah, I like that. Um, anyway, so these variables sneak in. I fully expect this year, meaning 2018, to be a decent year. It may not be as good as last year. The S&P 500. Alan, what did the S&P 500 do last year? 25%. Yeah. Well, if you're going to predict and sit here today, because you've been a financial advisor, a part of your history, what would you guess the S&P 500 will end up this year? What would be your opinion? Well, uh, I think it depends largely on what happens in November or the congressional elections. But, I that's, th but that's also an attorney. I'm just looking for the end number. What's your guess? Can I have a range of, say, 3%? <laughs> Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. I'd say between 8 and 11% on the upside from the close on December 29th. I was going to go to 7 to 10, so you and I are on the same boat, right. but I already knew that. But that's okay. The reality, I figured to be about a 10% year. Now. That's a, still a great year. It's a great year. Now, what happens is, and what Alan was leading us into, if the midterm elections if the Republicans lose the House or the Senate, um, it, it could adversely affect the whole market as we come out towards the end of the year. Don't now, we expect them, though, to lose? Because doesn't that normally happen? Didn't it happen with Clinton? It happened with it Obama? Has in the past. That doesn't mean that, that GW, it's going to happen. GW, it happened to GW, too. Well, it doesn't mean that it's, it's going it's to It's not going to affect the market much if... Uh, if the Republicans lose some seats, but That's if they lose said. one of the houses, the one. senator of the house. Well, then there's yeah. the other side of the coin is that won't adversely affect the economy immediately. Immediately. Because the economy of it's humming along, we're not changing anything immediately in the houses. Or but again, it's not the economy. It's just the feeling. It's perception. Yeah. Perception. Well, the economy is like a, like a train. It doesn't stop on a dime. Even if you pull that string, it doesn't right. just stop. It takes a long time. But when it stops, boy, does it take a long time to get it going mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So when a recession hits, hey, you know, it's, it's the same thing. So literally what I talk to people about, okay, let's talk about short-term money. Short-term money to me is a year, six months at least, but at least let's talk a year. Uh, there's 5% instruments out there. They're utilities. Um, they're dead instruments. They're not common stock, and they pay interest every three months. And it's probably the best thing I can find. Other than that, I tell people, hey, stay in the bank. Earn that one or one and a half or two, whatever. I have seen actually uh, two uh, institutions send me paperwork in the last 60 days offering one and a half percent. Yeah, yeah. Which is a long way from the one half of one tenth of one third of one quarter I used to get. And I think a lot of them are six. We'll months. hold your money and send you a bill. You the key bill. thing <laughs> is this if it's money that needs to be used to go buy a house or buy a car, I tell people, well, keep that in the bank. But if you got a one year window, uh, maybe a 5% number might be better, and then you collect the interest every three months and we go. That's one instrument. The second one is, let's talk long-term, and that's called an insured investment. We put investment together with insurance. And last year, if you'd have been in the S&P 500, you'd be up 25% in that insured investment, most of them, some of them. My, com my compliance people say I'm, you've got to know which insurance company you're dealing with and their claims-paying ability, and so we only deal with the highest-rated companies. And, Joe, don't you think that some people who are listening hear that 25% figure, and then when you start talking about, uh, you know, 5 or 6%, they go, all right, I want that 25%. And then when the market goes down to whole, yep. they go, well, I, I should have had that 5%, you know. Well, you see, here's the key. Nobody, nobody knows what the market's going to do for sure. We have our guesstimates, educated guesses, et cetera. The insured investment says, look, we are in the market. If the market wins, hallelujah. But if the market doesn't win, they're going to guarantee you income for life. They're going to guarantee a death benefit that protects the principal. I'm, I'm talking to a very, 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 well, let's put it this way. He's 89 years old. Got a lot of money, and it's sitting in nothing, and he's saying, I should invest it. And I said, but most important thing is you want to protect that money for your family. Of course. So I said, let's, we have an instrument that guarantees that money back no matter what, as long as you don't touch it. But we can be in the market, and if the market performs, hallelujah. But if the market doesn't, your money's protected. That's an insured investment. Absolutely. So 89 with a lot of money, I'd tell him, go spend some. Well, he doesn't need to. He's got plenty. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't need to spend it. He has spent it. He's, he's, he doesn't he's have it. He's comfortable. That. He's comfortable, so that's not the problem. What I'm looking at is, 
most people at this point, yeah, I want to make something on it just because I'm sick and tired of not making something on it. But he I'm, should take us on a cruise. That's it. That too. I was thinking he, he needed an adopted <laughs> daughter. Adopted daughter. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. He, he's taking a trip this week. <laughs> anyway, the, the key that I look at is when I look at people and said, hey, look, if we have an insured investment that protects you whether you live or die, guarantees your income and, and guarantees your family money in case you die on the wrong day when I, I joke about that but it's true but it, yeah it matters let's say you put a hundred thousand dollars into something and you die the next day and it's still a hundred your family's happy they get a hundred but what if the market tanked and it went down to 50 and all they got was 50 they're not happy they're not happy. that would be the wrong day they, they want you to die on the right day when the market's up so we put this insurance together with it that can guarantee the money that you put in, and some of them guarantee a 5% escalation every year. Some of them guarantee more than that, highest anniversaries. They got all kinds of things that, that are available to protect it. And Joe, you know, if you're, if you're a younger person, you can afford, in my opinion, to be a little bit more risky with where you put your money, because so you can ride out market cycles. Well, you know, but an 89-year-old guy, no, year old, he no. doesn't have that much time to no. do that. 340-1590. Anybody needs to get information on stuff like this. That's what we do. You know, like we're talking about car insurance and the ritual and what happens. In fact, if you sold that guy something that wasn't appropriate, you'd be in trouble. Well, my compliance people get upset when you do that. It's got to be an appropriate investment. So when I look at somebody that's there, the concept we talked about literally was he wants to protect that money. Yeah, he wants to make, but he wants to protect it. The death benefit is the critical element. So, so you, you found a way to solve that need. There you go. 340-1590. We have how much time? Mother? A minute. A minute. I was going to put my glasses on, but it's too late now. Yeah. I asked you because I can't read it. <laughs> Alan. Yes. Words of, words of wisdom. We have an attorney here today. You know, you attorneys usually are pretty verbal. My quick words of wisdom today is, Always realize that the impossible can happen, as evidenced by the fact that a number 16 seed beat the number one seed <laughs> in the NCAA tournament. Boy, I'll tell you what, has there Here been I was taking, you were talking about the Don knocking off all his other competitors. But he was, he was on the money, oh, 16. Oh, 16. <laughs> 16. That's, right. yeah. That's old is news. It, is this prophetic? <laughs> <laughs> That's old news. All right, guys, I think we're just about winding. Yep. Where, where are we winding? Winding 30 seconds. Winding 30 seconds. Dan? Hey, you know, I, I hope everybody has a blessed, you know, blessed day and that they get out there and enjoy the beauty of today because it's a beautiful day. Out. Yeah, boy, I'll tell you. Thank you, Lord. We're in Florida. Absolutely. All right, you guys, and until next week, Bulldog, thanks for calling. Tony, thanks. We'll talk to you next week. Adios. been listening to the Team Martech Hour. The Team Martech Hour is a paid program. The content was provided by the advertiser. WPSL, its staff, management, and ownership were not responsible for its content. Investment involves risk. Prior to making any investment, an investor should meet suitability requirements. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Neither the opinions expressed nor the information provided constitutes a recommendation to purchase or provide investment advice. The material presented is not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person or firm. Securities offered through Centaurus Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. Tune in again next Wednesday at 11.05 for the Team Martech Hour here on WPSL 1590.